What is going on guys, Christian Music here, welcome back to the channel, and if you're new, welcome, we are glad to have you, and welcome to your first 10 minutes in Ableton Live 9. Now, I've been getting a lot of messages like, yo, I just got the program, uh, you know, can you get... Can you help me out? You know, can you get me started? Blah, blah, blah. So I'm just going to make this video for the absolute beginner. Uh, you know, maybe you can learn something, you know, shortcuts, this and that, what everything does. So you can just get right into making music because I know when I started, uh, I, I had to learn every little thing because I wanted to be good at it. And, you know, it took me a while before I even made my first track to just get to know the program. And I advise y'all to do the same. Just get to know your program. But this video is going to be like 10 minute video showing you what you need to know. To make your first track the basic things about the software that you need to know first thing I'm gonna say whatever you need and whatever you want to know about a button you know a text uh, whatever you want a monitor info anything uh, if you hover over it there's this thing there's this magical little box of wisdom right here it's called the info view and if you hover over anything it'll pop up like uh, for, for instance this loop right here it says loop switch click here to activate the arrangement loop and it literally goes for literally anything I'm not even joking when I say literally it's 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 amazing but anyways now that I got that out of the way that'll help you a ton so if you don't know what something is just hover over it and it'll tell you like a whole paragraph of what it is so and that is that it's really cool so back to the subject at hand this is what you're gonna see as soon as you boot up the program I didn't do anything this is called the session view I don't really use this that much to create music I use it like when I'm DJing if I have a, like a separate MIDI controller or a launch pad I want to do samples or something you just load the samples up and you can just play them like that I also use this to control the volumes you can see all the volumes you probably see it in my videos uh, master channel delay reverb um, it's just you can send things so this is an A this is B so if you want reverb, you just send it to A. I don't really use that either. I just put the reverb on the thing, but we'll get to that. And then this is called the arrangement view. This is what you're going to want to be or what most people use to make a song, to make a track, because you can actually see the song progress. This is uh, it's one by one right now. You zoom in one by two, one by four, just so you know what the counts and the bars and the beats per measure, stuff like that, stuff like that. So we're going to start off with the top. Uh, this is a tap. You can literally tap any tempo, like one, two, three, four, and it'll go to that tempo. So I'm gonna put it just back where it was. This, you can adjust the tempo, stuff like that. Uh, time signature, metronome, count ins, bars, uh, play. All of this is really generic. Um, the loop, you can loop, so it goes and then it loops. And then I'll explain this a little bit in more detail because people don't really know what this is, but uh, this is key. And really it's like your keyboard your computer keyboard I use it in every session I do in every project uh, for example one of the many keys I use is I you press key you press what you want to change so for example I do this recording button I press that click it with my mouse and then I press R and then you see it right here and now you press key and when I press R it automatically it automatically records it just makes sense to me R record and then records you can do whatever you want so that's that MIDI is the same thing, but with a MIDI controller, if you want to assign buttons to your MIDI controller, that's that. This is your CPU usage. Um, right now it's at 1% because I'm not really doing anything. If you look at my videos, it's, it's around like 20-ish to 30 because I'm, I'm also recording my audio and my video at 1080p, so it's a bit higher. But when I'm not recording, it's, it's low because I have a pretty good computer, but you don't really need like a freaking beefy computer to, you know, make music. You just need to have... You know, a decent computer and you'll be fine, you'll be fine. And then you get too many clips right off the right off the bat. You get two audio clips right off the bat. You can always add more, insert audio track, insert MIDI track. And then another thing uh, that's really important is to see this right here, control T, control shift T, those are your shortcuts. Uh, it's really important to know your shortcuts. It completely cuts the time to make music in half. I'm not even joking. So control T is audio track, command or command if you're on a Mac, control if you're on a PC so if I press control Z that's uh, undo so if you make a mistake you don't have to redo everything you just have to press uh, control Z and that goes back as many times as you need to a MIDI track control shift T and then there's your MIDI track uh, as always you can just press uh, right click and those are always there for you so yeah that's that moving on to over here is your sound so any sounds that you want they're all in MIDI so so if you want a bass there's your bass and you just put it onto a MIDI track hold on put it onto a MIDI track and then you activate it make sure it's activated over here and then uh, you can play it that way 
Um, I don't really use these that much. These are stock. Everyone has these if you have Ableton. I'm just going to press Command Z. And then uh, I don't really use these. I'll show you what I use in a minute. Uh, drums uh, is a kit. So it, it's automatically a drum rack for you. And a drum rack is this right here. Just a drum rack. Uh, you got your kicks, snares. They're all, they're all stock. So you can use it. Uh, instruments this is what I use if I want to use a stock instrument mess around with it um, so I go to instrument rack and all your instruments are here piano and keys there's pianos they're all MIDI so you put them in the MIDI track and so you got all of these impulse external instruments blah blah blah, blah, blah. a drum rack if you want to make your own drum rack you just load your drums and then play them on your keyboard on your MIDI uh, MIDI keyboard my launch pad whatever you have audio effects are your eqs your compressors your uh vocoder stuff like that delays all that you put that on uh on the track and then you have your thing uh so if i wanted to eq something you would eq it and then it would it would do that and then that's how you would do that midi effects you put these on midi tracks uh so say if you want an arpeggiator on just one note you would just plop that on there and then set it up however you want to so those are your MIDI effects. Uh, you don't really need to know Max for Live. Uh, that's like a separate thing. And then these are where your plugins are. If you want to know, uh, I'll make a separate video on how to install plugins. It's pretty self-explanatory. It'll, it'll probably only take me like th like three minute video, but I have to exit out of this. But I don't want to do that right now. So let me know in the comments if you're having trouble loading in your plugins, stuff like that. But this is where all your plugins are and uh, will be. Uh, so yeah, and then these are your clips basically just you know tracks you can load them in uh, Audio tracks and then they'll be there. Uh, these are stock. I don't think I added any these are your samples This one hits bells bongos anything you need. They're all stock packs I don't really mess with that user library. This is where all your save stuff go. So I have my vocal thing and you just Save it that way And there it is all my vocal stuff is in I'm gonna just control Z that and this is where you you save stuff so other things that you save are in there and these folders right here I added them myself you just press add folder and then you just uh, locate wherever your samples are so you know samples and then press ok and then it'll show up right here and all your samples will be in there uh, I'm gonna delete that because I don't really need that on there but yeah these are where all my samples are all my drums all, all everything that I use uh, to plop in here in Ableton. But yeah, now that is that. So now I'm going to teach you guys some of the shortcuts that you're going to be using uh, mostly 24 7. All right. Shortcut number one, I showed you on the beginning Control T, add an audio track, um, and then Control Shift T, add a MIDI track, and then Control Z is undo. So you undo that. You can make as many audio and MIDI tracks as you want, as many as your computer can handle, honestly. <laughs> But um, yeah. So those are the con those are so those are some of the shortcuts. Another shortcut that you need to learn. So another shortcut that will be a lifesaver to you is Control D or Command D if you're on a Mac, and that's just copy paste in, duplicating it as many times as you want. Uh, control Z, you can just Control Z everything. If you hold Control and press the the left mouse button and drag it you can drag it wherever you want and then it'll make two of them so instead of duplicating it right next to it it'll just you can just drag and drop it to wherever you want so that is basically it guys i ran through the basic things you know volume uh where everything is where everything's located what everything does and i hope that's enough and if it's not enough let me know in the comments so i can make uh, a really really detailed video for y'all because I, I just wanted y'all to know where everything is so y'all wouldn't be overwhelmed and I wanted to make it into a short video like a 10 minute video so you can just watch this video and refer back to it whenever need be and and keep in mind this is for the absolute beginner okay I know it's boring to <laughs> it'd be boring for like it would be boring for a guy like me to watch because you know I know some of this stuff already but you know if you're an absolute beginner I know it could be overwhelming but just trust me it's worth it to learn uh, everything so get get to know your program and I hope this helped you know if you're just starting out if you just got the program so yeah guys uh, that was it and I hope you enjoyed like it if you did uh, leave a comment on if you have any questions and stuff like that and always subscribe we growing thank you for the crazy amounts of support I hope everybody's having a great uh, break if you're on break I'm almost on break so that's pretty cool but anyways I'll see you guys tomorrow uh, have a great rest of the day and I'm out See ya.